Hey everyone, welcome back to The Road to Superman. This is the web series where we follow all the latest updates and rumours regarding the Superman reboot. This is episode 13, and today we have our first official set photos in Norway, and James Gunn has revealed the exact scene that they are filming there. Now before we get into today's video, I just want to quickly mention that I've created some merchandise. I was asked by some of my subscribers to make some, and so I thought I would oblige and create some designs for you all. There are just a couple of designs on there right now, but depending on demand and interest, I can always create some more. The link is in the description below and I hope you like them. But now on with the video. So let's start with the set photos as that is what you are all here for. The first is of James Gunn himself in Norway and he had a little interview with a local publication talking about the movie. We have filmed the first scenes which are when Superman flees to the ice fortress. We wanted a place that was beautiful and felt like being in the middle of the Arctic, so we looked at several places in the world. But there were many things that sold Svalbard or us over the other places. Firstly, there is the natural beauty, but also the fact you'll find a varied landscape here that you won't find anywhere else. Nature gives a special feeling. And so we have a few things to take away from that. Firstly, we were right. They are filming for the Fortress of Solid which made a lot of sense as Norway looked like an ideal location for the fortress to be set in, and Gunn emphasised that in his interview. But what is interesting is Gunn says Superman flees to the Fortress of Solitude. Now this could just be a misinterpretation by the Norwegian journalist, and Gunn actually meant flies to the Fortress of Solitude, and that could be backed up by the journalist saying Gunn said Ice Fortress, which is a strange way of describing it. But let's just say he actually meant fleeing to the Fortress of Solitude. Well, that means he was in some form of danger before this scene. Now, this is strange because Superman is so powerful, so he must have been overwhelmed by someone or multiple people who were very powerful. Now, what is interesting is when the Superman crest was announced, James Gunn and David Corenswet joked around in the comments about wanting to share a video of David rolling around in the snow in his swimming trunks. And Maria Deferia, who was playing the engineer, said she wanted to see that video too, but then also said she wanted to see her own video of doing the same thing, which means she is in the same location as the two of them, which means the engineer is also at the Fortress of Solitude. Now this is strange because this location is supposed to be a secret, so Superman must have brought her there. And if we use that assumption with what Gunn may have said in that interview, maybe Superman flees to the fortress because the engineer is severely injured and only the technology in the Fortress of Solitude can help her. Now there is a theory out there that I think originated from Boba Talks who has a great YouTube channel where he said he thinks the DCU may be doing a reverse Kingdom Come story, where the heroes early on don't really know how to be true heroes and so Superman comes in and shows them the way. And if we use that theory and combine it with my own theory here, I think maybe there was a fight early on where the other established heroes are fighting alongside Superman but don't necessarily like him too much. But then the engineer gets seriously injured during that battle and then Superman has to save her at the Fortress of Solitude. And because of that, he shows her kindness that no other current hero really has shown. And maybe that changes her mind on him and the way to be a hero. And also using real anarchy theory who is also another great youtuber he said for the authority movie scheduled to be released sometime in the future he thinks it will actually be a superman versus the authority movie and i think maybe if that is true the engineer could be the contrasting member of the group where she has seen the good superman does and how he saved her and maybe that could play into the conflict within the authority group themselves with her having empathy for superman now in reality it could also go the other way, where Superman didn't bring her to the Fortress of Solitude, but instead she followed him there without him knowing. And that also plays into either the rest of the Superman movie or the Authority movie. She could have found his home that could be used against Superman if the Authority movie is actually Superman versus the Authority. And what gives Real Anarchy's theory even more evidence for it being true is that in the comic, Superman has the same crest design as Gunn's Superman does, but obviously with the black instead of the gold, which also plays into Boba Talk's theory that this will be a 
reverse version of the Kingdom Come storyline. And can I just say, it is so fun being able to theorise about what this movie will do and what it means for the future. One major thing lacking from the DCEU was the theorising of what happens next, because they didn't have a plan, they just made random movies. But with the DCU, it feels different. It's nice to be excited for more than just this one movie and be able to theorise not only what happens in Superman, but what it could mean next in the DCU story. So let me know what you think of my theory as to why the engineer is with Superman at the Fortress of Solitude, as well as letting me know what you think about Boba Torx's and real Anarchy's theories about the Reverse Kingdom Come storyline and the Superman vs the Authority movie. Those are some really interesting theories. But now onto the second half of Gunn's words from that interview. He says, we wanted a place that was beautiful and felt like being in the middle of the Arctic, so we looked at several places in the world. But there were many things that sold Svalbard for us over the other places. Firstly, there is the natural beauty, but also the fact that you'll find a varied landscape here that you won't find anywhere else. Nature gives a special feeling. And I really like the sound of that. I've said this before, but I miss movies feeling real. Recently, I've felt that many movies feel too fake with everything being filmed on green screen, so I'm really glad Gunn is using real locations. I love him saying nature gives a special feeling, because it really does. It won't feel artificial, and I love when they mix real locations with CGI, because it makes the CGI feel far more real. So I'm glad he's decided to use large practical sets and real locations for super Superman. It's also a really smart move in terms of helping the VFX department. Having to spend less time on shots they could actually create practically means they can spend more time on shots that really need their time, like flight scenes or action scenes. Those are the sequences that really need to be top notch to sell the realism of the movie. So any moments where real locations or large sets can be used instead of relying on the VFX department to fix all your problems will only benefit the movie. So that's another win for the Superman movie. But we also had two more photos revealed of the set in Norway. The first is this one, which we can see has a lot of vehicles and equipment in it, which means they have a lot of people here filming this sequence for the movie. Which is normal, but it could indicate the size of the scene they are filming. But let's look at the terrain in the background. It's a very mountainous area, which I think is due to them wanting to hide the Fortress of Solitude in plain sight, because because from a distance, I imagine it could just look like a random mountain, but when you go close up, you can see it definitely isn't a mountain. And now if we look at the second photo from the set, we can see these huge fans, and I think these are here for only one reason. So we can get a beautiful shot of Superman standing in front of the Fortress of Solitude, with his cape flying in the wind behind him, with the northern lights shining down onto him. At least I hope that is what this shot will be. Now the next thing to talk about is another section of the interview where Gunn talked about people watching them film in Norway. He said, We have had some who have been curious, yes, who have stood and watched, but that's perfectly fine. And that's the big difference, because being interested in just watching is something completely different than when you have people trying to sneak into the set to take pictures that they can make money from by sending online, says the director. And for me, if people are already finding these sets, then it's only a matter of time before someone snaps a photo of the actors in costume. More importantly, David Corrinsweat in costume, and so I think it is very likely that we get an official photo of David in the full suit quite soon, as we all know Gunn likes to be the first to announce things from his movies, and he's not the biggest fans of scoopers and news outlets. So I would expect within the next two weeks we will get our first official look at the full Superman suit, but until then, we have have some more incredible fan art to look at, which could give us an idea of what the full suit looks like. Now this is Job Hutz's latest design, and I've actually used it for the thumbnail as well, and I have to say, I want the actual suit to look like this. The collar and cape placements works very well, and the size of the crest is perfect. The belt and no trunks work so well, which is inspired by the Rebirth suit from the comics. And as for the colours, I love them. They're bold, but not too bright, which is what I want from the Superman suit. And so I really hope we get this as the actual suit. But 
what I hope for and what I actually think will happen are two different things. And I think this is what the actual suit will look like. I think they have gone with the darker blue with the cape placement just like this. And I think it will have the more modern belt, but with the trunks. And for me, once you see the costume without trunks, it makes the design with trunks look even worse. I think Gunn is trying to blend all eras together with this suit. At least that's the indication I have got from the crest design. The yellow being the base of the crest is from the first ever comic design. The S shape is inspired by Kingdom Come. The colors are inspired by the classic suit and the texture is inspired by more modern designs. And so I think the rest of the suits will be a mix of eras too. So the modern texture with more classic colors with a modern belt, but with classic trunks, which I guess is best to unite as many people together, but we won't go on about the trunks again today. So let me know what you think about these two designs in the comments below. The next thing to talk about is actually a bit of bad news. Gunn has confirmed he won't be at Comic-Con this year, which isn't good news as it means there probably won't be a DCU panel unless Peter Safran hosts it and James Gunn maybe does a pre-recorded video for the audience. He has confirmed that he will still be shooting Superman when Comic-Con happens this year, which is in July. So the movie will still be filming in four months time. But so does this mean we won't be getting any DCU updates through a huge event like Comic-Con this year. Unfortunately, that's what it looks like. David Zaslav said in the coming months, Gunn will reveal more information on their upcoming 10-year plan, and when someone asked if Gunn would do that through Comic-Con or a live video, Gunn asked if those are the only two options. Now, my hope is that he is implying that DC fandom is coming back. That was a time that I loved, and I think it was such an incredible way of allowing fans from all across the globe to come together and be excited for DC at the same time. So I really hope they bring that back, as that would definitely be another way of firstly making the fandom feel more united, but also making them feel more unique to Marvel. Having their own special events for just DC news would be amazing, and they could even rebrand it if Gunn wanted to. It doesn't have to be called DC Fandom. It could be called DC Con or something much better than that. Either way, I think most DC fans would be up for DC fandom coming back. It would get DC trending on social media a lot, and all the news outlets would be focused on DC only. I think it has to come back, and I really hope that is what Gunn is alluding to. Maybe even make it a physical, real event that fans can go to, but then it is also live streamed to fans all around the world for maybe like $10 entry. That way, they could make more money from it too. This is all just me thinking out loud, but all I know is that I want DC fandom to come back. But let me know if you want the event to come back too in the comments below. Now the final update of today's longer episode is that James Gunn has confirmed that Wendell Pierce will be Perry White in the DCU. And just from reading the comments from my previous Roads to Superman video, it is very clear that everyone is very happy with this casting. So I am glad they have made it official. I do have one final thing I want to talk about. Do you like the longer videos. This video is a lot longer than normal, so I want to know if you like that I take more time with each piece of information in this episode, and if you want that in future videos too. Or do you like me talking through the news as quick as possible, or the pace I normally take? I'm currently trying to make improvements to my channel to make it more engaging to my current viewers and potential viewers, so any advice would be greatly appreciated. But that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, and subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. I hope to see you here again soon, so until then, have a great day. Bye!